What's happening everyone? In this video we'll be introducing the string object in Python. Specifically we'll be using Python 2.7. Similar to most coding languages, the string in Python is a container for characters and is most commonly used to handle plain text. In the beginning of this video we'll cover the basics of the string data type. Later we'll open up a coding editor and briefly overview the most common functions and functionality you'll be using when operating with the string object. So, to start off with, string creation in Python uses either single or double quotes. For example, we can create an empty string simply by writing a equals single quotes, like here on the left, or a equals double quotes, seen here on the right. They do the exact same thing. In some other coding languages, single quotes can be used to denote characters, while double quotes are used for strings. Recall, strings are effectively arrays of characters. For simplicity, in the rest of this lesson we'll be sticking to double quotes, but understand that under any circumstance they could be replaced with single quotes in Python. If we wish to initialize a non-empty string, the syntax is identical except we write what we would like the string to contain within the quotes. Obviously in this example we're setting another variable called a equal to some example string. So this a variable now is going to contain all of these characters that you see in the some example string in the sequence that you see them here. So it's basically an array where each element is one character. We can access any of the individual characters in the string using the same bracket operator syntax we would use for a list, or an array if you're coming from another coding language. So obviously here we have the same string from the last slide, and we're able to access any of the elements. So here we're accessing the zeroth element, which is an S. Here we're accessing the first element, which is an O. And here we're accessing the second element, which is an M. The example on the right is showcasing a unique feature of the Python bracket operator. We can access elements starting from the end of the string using negative rather than positive numbers. For example, if we enter negative 1, we will be returned the last element, negative 2, the second from last element, and so on. So here we're accessing the last element simply by entering the index negative 1, and obviously the last element here is g. I'm not showing it on this slide, but um, note that we can also use the bracket operator syntax to set individual characters in the string. For example, if we called a of 0 equals quote z, it would replace the s in our original string with a z. We can add two strings together simply by using the addition sign. This will effectively stick the second string onto the end of the first string. Um, this operation is also known as concatenation. So here we're setting our first variable a equal to a, b, c, setting the variable b equal to 1, 2, 3, and then setting the variable c equal to a plus b, which is effectively going to take a, uh, which is just a, b, c, and then stick b onto the end of a, b, c. And then here obviously we're printing out c, and you can see that it is exactly that. It's just a, b, c, 1, 2, 3. Python provides a convenient function called str, which allows you to convert any number, be it integer, float, and so on, into a string. So here we're setting a equal to 3.1415, um, the first couple digits of pi, and then we're just printing a out. So here we're setting b equal to str of a, which is going to convert a into a string. And then here we're printing out b, and we can see we have the same output as we had when we were printing a, except now it's in string format. These are just some of the most common Python string operations built into the Python coding language. In the next section, we'll get to the coding editor and try some of them out. Pause the video here if you'd like to jot these down. So now that we've got our coding editor open, I'll just run you guys through some of the uh, most basic operations and algorithms you'll be using when you're uh, using the string object. As you can see, we already have a couple lines of code here. Um, basically, we just have the entire plain text for the book Alice in Wonderland um, by Lewis Carroll, saved as a .txt file. And um, in these two lines of code, here we're just opening this Alice in Wonderland file, um, specifying that we're reading it. And then here we're just creating a new string called text that's equal to the output of uh, f.read, which is effectively going to read the entirety of the, of the text of this book here, and then throw all of that into a string and set text equal to that string. 
So this will just give us a big body of uh, text that we can use so I can show you guys some of the operations we will be using with the string object. So the most basic of the uh, string operations is just going to be likely uh, the length function. Um, this is pretty much the same as you would see uh, when you're using a list. All we have to do is write len and then pass in uh, the string. So in this case obviously text is our string. Um, so we can switch over to our command prompt and run this and we can see that we have 163,809 characters. The next thing we can do is print out um, some of the individual characters themselves. So we could say uh, print text 0, uh, print text 1, print text negative 1. And recall that this is going to print the first character, this will print the second, and then because we're using the negative uh, integer format, this will print the last character. So we can see the first character in the entirety of the book is P, second character is R, and then the last character is a period. And we can switch over to the actual text and we can see that this is correct. The first two characters are PR and the last character is a period right here. One of the most useful string functions, in my opinion, at least for parsing, is the split function. And what this does is it basically splits the string every time it encounters uh, a space. And you can also change it so that it splits every time it sees like a period or every time it sees an actual list of characters. So you could pass a period. This is going to split the string every time it sees a period. This will split the string every time it sees the word the. And pretty much it's going to return uh, a list where each element is a subsection of the original string uh, split around whatever character you pass. So by default, it'll split the string every time it sees a space character. So pretty much this is going to be splitting uh, the string into a list of words. So we can say every word is equal to text.split. And then we can iterate over this and just print out all the words in the uh, Alice in Wonderland book. So for E in every word, print E. Then we can switch back over to our terminal, run this, and you can see now obviously we have every single word in the entirety of the book uh, printed out nice and simple here on the left. Like I was saying, we can also pass a specific string um, or character that we like to split it on. So we could do uh, a period, and what this is going to do is basically return us a list of every sentence in the text. So we can say every sentence. And then for s in every sentence, print s. This will print out every one of the sentences. So if you go up to the top here, let's see. We can see uh, now we've got every sentence in the book printed out nice and neat. Um, and that, like I was saying, this is really useful if you're parsing through some big data set um, or you just want to clean up some plain text or text from a file. Another useful function is the lower function built into the string object. Um, and effectively, this is going to return uh, the original string, but every time there was an uppercase character, it's going to replace it with a lowercase character. So we can say lowercase is equal to text.lower. Now we can print this out. It's, remember, it's going to be the same as the original, except we're going to have, obviously, no uppercase characters. And uh, this works the same with uh, the upper function. Just going to make everything uppercase. So we can change this to uppercase. So now everything's in capital letters. The capitalize function is kind of similar to the upper function, except this is going to uh, just return a copy of the string where the first character is capitalized. So in this case, we already have, um, I believe the P is, yep, the P is uppercase already. So this isn't going to change anything if we pass the entirety of this text. Uh, 
But what we could do is split the body of the text into words um, using our text.split function. And then uh, for iterate over all the words and then say upper is equal to, we can basically capitalize every single one of the words and print it out. Um, so it's equal to w dot capitalize. And we can print that and we should have every word in Alice in Wonderland but uh, capitalized. Another fairly useful function, especially in parsing once again, is the find function. So syntax would be text.find, and then you pass whatever you want uh, to find the index of. So we could say, um, obviously, Alice is going to be pretty prominent in Alice in Wonderland, so we can just print out uh, text.find Alice, and this is going to print out the index of the first instance of Alice. Uh, it comes across in the text string. So, uh, obviously pretty early on, we can see Alice is found in the plain text. Another interesting one, uh, especially in this case, is the count function, um, which you pass it a string, and then it'll return an integer, which uh, is a recording of the number of times that string is found in the actual text. So we could say text dot uh, count Alice, and this should be pretty high considering um, she's the main character. So we have 398 instances of Alice in the actual plain text. The replace function um, will return a copy of the string uh, where each instance of the first argument is replaced with uh, the second argument. So we could say text.replace Alice with Bob, and we can print this out. And so this is going to be Alice in Wonderland. Uh, actually, no, this is going to be Bob in Wonderland because it's going to be replacing every single instance of Alice with Bob. So if we scroll up to the top here. <laughs> we can say this is now uh, Bob's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, and then every instance of Alice was replaced with Bob. And I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more introductions to Python data structures in the future, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.